Okay, y'all, this is Mary Sierra. Um, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm gonna give like the super quick background to who you are, and then you've got some pictures. We're gonna look at some pictures, and I'll just say you have a lot of pictures. So we're not gonna look at all of them, okay? Shooting for 30 years. Yeah, remember to use a microphone, otherwise okay. people won't hear your pithy sayings. So you're from Massachusetts-ish? Yes, uh, Rhode kind of Island. Uh, in Rhode on Island. the border, no, yeah. Somewhere over there. Um, Westport, Mass is where you live now. Now, so like a backstory, little detail that I like to tell, what I'm telling my friends about you, mm -hmm. um, is that uh, um, when you were 15, you won a modeling contest. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result of that modeling contest, you were Oh, you were taken to New York City and photographed by Richard Avedon. I was, yeah. Uh, yeah it, was, it was very strange. Um, uh, I was from a small town, uh, Ocean Town, uh, Westport, Mass. And um, as a 15-year-old, there was something called the Love's Baby Soft Modeling Contest, which every girl... Say, wait, say it again? Um, I'm sorry, I can't say it. Love's Baby Soft Modeling Contest. Love's Baby yes, Soft. That's right. And um, it, was, keeping it was a, a perfume that was that smells like baby powder and was marketed to you know 15 year olds. So I entered that contest. I ended up coming to New York as one of the finalists. They put us up at the Pierre a Hotel, which was wow. very nice uptown, and drove us around in limos. Um, I ended up um, signing with Elite for a little while, and. Um, the thing that was, uh, I mean, modeling was okay for a little while, but really the thing I became fascinated with was the photography, I was watching all the photographers and the assistants. Um, and that was the thing that I wished I was doing. So um, later, when it was time for me to go to college, I applied to Pratt and studied photography. But that was as a result of, you know, being exposed to photography, because um, through the modeling, because other words, from a small being from a small town, I never would have had you know access to that or that information. And also, it introduced me to New York as well, um, which is where I ended up coming. And once I came to New York, I knew that was the place for me. Well, there's sort of a New York, you know, uh, stories from Storytown is all about New York. And uh, something I, I was going to mention when Danny was here is that. Um, you know, getting a, 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 an early job working for Billboard, that's not something that's gonna happen in many places in the country. We had a previous storyteller, Bob Lawl, who was a record promoter, and he got a first job uh, as a record buyer for Corvettes. And that's an, another job that you don't get if you're living anywhere else. And you were in New York where where this stuff is happening, right? I mean, it's just a place of, yeah, and, it's a place and, of activity and opportunity. Yeah, and no, I didn't really know that as a teenager, but also I was an artist and a little bit of a weirdo, so as soon as I came to New York, I found my place. And um, so once I kind of got introduced to New York, I, that was really the place I knew I had to be. And then your first job was with paper? That yes, I graduated from paper, I mean, I graduated from Pratt Institute, um, and then later on, a few years later, I um, got a gig with Paper Magazine. Um, and basically what happened was they didn't really pay you, but they gave you access to a lot of really great um, musicians, uh, direct film directors, actors. So after, after graduating school, it was a way that I could build my portfolio and, um, you know, so that I could work. Not to jump ahead, but you, 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 you photographed the cover of Jeff Buckley's Grace album, and you met Jeff through the paper gig, right? Yeah, um, I think um, there was a guy at Paper Magazine named David Herskovitz, and he was the editor there for the photography. Um, so I would do one or two jobs for him a month, and I think when the thing with Jeff came up, I had a choice, I think, between the actor John Lithgow and this guy who was making a scene over at a place called Chennai. And um, I was like, eh, give me the musician, you know? So um, when I initially photographed Jeff, uh, I hadn't heard him play yet, so I didn't really know what his music was like. 
but I think after that um, photo shoot, I really, I really felt like that guy is going to be good. So I went to check him out at Chenet, and he didn't disappoint. You, you told me that for the lay, for the some of the labels, they would frequently give you assignments for emerging artists who, who where you'd work with the art director to try to figure out what would be their kind of their visual look um, because they were they were early and, and you were going to be have a significant role in kind of capturing the, something about them, right? Right, and it was a different time in the 90s. Um, Sony and a lot of music companies had a lot more money, and now it was before the inter internet took over and really kind of deflated the big companies. Um, so they had a lot of money to put into developing acts. Um, so a lot of times I would get new acts and help come up with um, looks for them. Um, and I would say texture and a lot of stuff that they could could be used in the album packaging to make it you know more interesting. Well, um, I think I picked. You sent me a bunch of pictures that were from uh, some of the record label work and from album album art, I guess we'd call it. Um, so I thought maybe we could just look at a few and you can sure. just tell us some stuff. So. Here's one. This is Mark Johnson, who I think is bass player, right? Yeah, and, and he, this was for Verve, and um, we had a really great um, uh, art director, Chika Azuma, and she's a very wonderful art director, and she, um, we went together, and the concept was really to, you know, to reflect more of the title, Sound of Summer Running, as opposed to just shooting a portrait of the artist. So we went and shot one of them as Mark Johnson's kid. Um, I think it's her. Uh, so, but really, this was really more of a concept album, so that was, um, I worked with the art director on that. That's Debrat. Um, this is something I shot as part of a, um, a, a Sony hired me to shoot 10 bands for uh, uh, an event called NARM, where they brought all of their um, acts, the 10 best, or the 10 acts that they would promote the most that year, so I ended up flying around the country shooting people like Sponge and Branford Marsalis and a lot of different people, and Brat was one of them, Debrat was one of them, and I think... Uh, what is she sitting on? That is a weird old barber chair that was in, du I think his, his name is Dupree, the um, produ producer was... Um, producing a lot of young hip-hop acts at that time, and they had some success, and she was up and coming, and she had a hit. This is Roy Hargrove. Um, where is this shot? Cuba. In yeah. Cuba. Yeah, it was really wonderful. Um, I, I got to travel to Cuba. Um, <laughs> but he, this was really great. Just going to Cuba was awesome. Um, he was, Roy Hargrove was playing along with a lot of wonderful uh, jazz musicians that were in the Castro band. Uh, Fidel Castro had a really um, keen interest in jazz, so he had this wonderful uh, band, and Roy Hargrove ended up playing with a lot of people from um, Castro's band. Mm -hmm. One of them, I think, was Chucha Valdez. Um, I can't remember. There was there was a really great musicians though, and the thing that was super fun was that we ended up going into the I guess sort of the ghettoy part where a lot of the people had come from a lot of the musicians, and um, where I, I shouldn't say it like that, but it, it it was you know a little bit poor, and the, it was really fun to document the you know people in their environments, and that's my favorite way to photograph people, and it's in more of a documentary style, I would say. Um, but yeah, that was uh, really great. A lot of texture in Cuba. Yeah, great. And was it? Well, just one more thing. I mean, this is sure. kind of a kind of like one of those dumb questions. I'm going to ask it anyway. It's just because the you know it's off kilter. A bit, and then was that deliberate? Is that was there some? Yeah, I would think I was the... trying to like in Cuba. Really, uh, there was a lot of textures, beautiful textures, and it had a very dreamy vibe to me in Cuba. So uh, a lot of what I was trying to do, besides getting a good photograph, is to really get a lot of the textures and that dreamy quality. So I kind of like the off kilter feeling, and mm -hmm. the you know I, I I used a strobe in the foreground, and it gives it a little bit of a. I don't know, I feel like there's a bit of a surreal vibe to yeah. it, um, you know, that the other people behind her in shadow and stuff. So I, you know, I was going for the dreamy vibe. This is Paula Cole. I just thought this was 
you know, I mean, obviously very striking. What, Thank you. What, 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 uh, how did this come about? Well, this was... This it is was, the opposite of the Roy Hargrove. Uh, it is, in a way. Well, this way. one was a concept. What the idea was, um, the name of the album, I was given the name, and it was called Amen. So, um, you know, the idea I had at the time, just because I had these candles, you know, those candles you buy at the supermarket that are kind of not voodoo candles, but they would have a Madonna in there, and it would, you know, sort of illuminate like her, her halo. And the, the thing that I used for the crown behind her head is I had this metal clock with all it, that looked like a sun, mm -hmm. and so I just put it behind her head. Oh, yeah. And um, then later the art director, Frank, um, Frank, uh, he did the MTV logo, he filled out the crown a little bit and, and then put the uh, color into the, um, into the fiery part. But it was really to reflect like, a, you know, a, a, um, a Madonna candle that you would buy in a supermarket. And... This is Joey Ramon. Yeah. Talk, talk about this picture. This is a cool, this is a, I mean, obviously just a great picture. Yeah. So. Well, you know, again, paper really um, exposed me to a lot of really amazing people that were popular at the time. Um, you know, it was funny, I was thinking about Joey Ramon because at, at that time, you know, you know, now he's like Joey Ramon and the Ramones, but, you know, I think in the time, that must have been about 90, and, you know, he was just somebody that was at CB's a lot. Like, I remember when I was a student at Pratt, like, you know, he came out and played on the lawn with the Ramones uh, at Pratt, and, you know, so I, 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 I think now, like, like Joey Ramone, but it, 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 right, it yeah, was this, like a regular fixture. Yeah, Ramones. that's funny, because this looks like it's yeah. a, the, a, an iconic Joey Ramone who yeah. had arrived, but you're, you're saying it really came from a, an earlier... Yeah, like this, I just, uh, you know, when uh, I got this from paper, um, I just went to his apartment, so and shot this in his apartment. And that's his, what is it, the cane? Well, he had a lot of tchotchkes all over the place, so I was just like, put that in front of your face. And he's like, okay. <laughs> we'll finish up with the Grace cover shot, which is, um, I think you told me that he, that you didn't, this, you were not a big fan of this one. Um, no, I didn't even um, make a contact print. I didn't make a print of this. I, it was on a contact sheet, and um, when we met up at Sony uh, to look at the images after the shoot, um, you know, it wasn't in my pile of proof prints. And but when Jeff was looking at the contact sheet, he just pointed at it, at it, and just said, "That's it. That's it." And um, I'm like, "Yeah, but look at this." And he was like. No, I can tell I'm listening to the music, uh, and that's the most important thing to me. So, um, you know, it was just, again, it was only this big, but he, and but he, he was saw like, that. that's it, yeah. and it, it, he never deviated from that, so um, it, you know, just kind of shows you how, like, you know, photo, the photos can really mean different things to different people. He saw something that I didn't really see in the photograph. Yeah. Okay, well I'm just going to mention one more time, 25 Years of Grace, an anniversary tribute to Jeff Buckley's classic album. It's just a great book, and I thank, thank you, you. To Mary Sierra for coming. Big hand for Mary.